immediately. We rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we speak, uh, begin with our first hymn. <laughs> Inhabit the places where we spend our time 
that we may be strengthened in the spaces where we work, play, worship, and relax. Grant us the things we need to support this body and life, but help us not cling to those things of this earth so tightly that we lose our grip on you. We pray in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Verses 3 through 12. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and growing, as it, is, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, today we are thankful for many things. Specifically, we consider thankfulness for people, places, and things. First of all, people. As Paul writes to the Colossians, he begins by saying, we thank God for you. And in that way, he would invite us also to consider people for whom, people for whom we are thankful. And as you think about that, I would encourage you perhaps even uh, someplace on your bulletin to write down the names of one or two people for whom you are thankful. I realize you may not have pencils in the pew right now, but uh, do that perhaps when you get home or think about it in your head, write it on your forehead. People for whom you're thankful. It might be mom or dad, brother or sister, husband, wife, children, teacher, or someone else maybe that you work with, a friend, co-worker, classmate, whatever it might be, people for whom you're thankful. And then, as Paul did, you might find a way specifically to in person, by letter, or some other way, to thank them directly yourself. Let that thanksgiving that you have for them show and be um, revealed by your words and actions. God has given us people, people in our lives for whom we can be thankful and that have, down through the years, many of them, nurtured us in the faith, brought us here into his house of worship, brought us into a relationship with him in Christ Jesus our Lord, and over the years has supported and cared for us now and again. 
of course, the one person for whom we all, for what could certainly be thankful, is the person of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is the one who has done everything for us that no matter what else is going on in our lives, no matter what we face day by day, Jesus has done all and given all for us. We are thankful for the people that, he, that God brings into our lives, and we are thankful for all that he does through those people and brings us together as a family. A family of God, with Jesus as our brother, with God our Father, gathering us together around his table, his table at which we receive the forgiveness of sins and the blessings and confidence and strength for daily life and the promise of eternal life with all who go before us. Those things are reason to give thanks. Perhaps as you have your Thanksgiving dinner, whether it is uh, in person, around the table, or by FaceTime, or Zoom, or however you end up giving thanks uh, and gathering with your people, it might be good to say to them, I give thanks to God for you, because, in Jesus' name.
for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, so there he is. He's running away from his brother, whom he had tricked out of the birthright. Remember that story? And he's running away. Finally, the sun has set. It's gotten too dark to travel. And so he lays down. And he lays down and puts his head on a stone. I guess it was common in those days to sleep that way, but I don't think I would choose a stone for a pillow. I'd rather have something softer. But there he is, sleeping, and he has a dream. And in that dream, he sees a ladder set up upon the earth and reaching to heaven, and angels ascending and descending on it. And as he wakes up, he says, Surely this is a holy place. This place is special. And he builds an altar to the Lord, pours oil upon it, and marks that spot, and God tells him of his promise that he will come back to this place, this place that he calls Beth-el, Bethel. If you know Hebrew, that means Beth, house, El, God, house of God. And it brings to mind for us all kinds of questions. Then what are some special places for you? Some counselors, when they are working for or helping you to find um, comfort and rest, will tell you to find that um, place of safety that special place in your mind and in your heart where you can go for peace and security. One of those places for me would be the North Shore of Lake Superior, one of the most beautiful places, I think, in the United States. Or perhaps Yosemite, if you've ever been there. What beauty, what majesty, what comfort, relaxation. Around here, perhaps it's Sichi Hollow, uh, where people find uh, the beauty of that of the trees and uh, the isolation of that place, or perhaps um, Spearfish Canyon, or perhaps there's some other place that you find as your special place. God has given us these places as a blessing. Places where we have that security and comfort. Some people might find that in their home, in their room, in that, you know, some, some little kids have a hiding hole where they go when they're either afraid or I remember when I was little and there was a storm or some other reason for the, or I had a bad dream, where was that place of security? Between mom and dad in their bed, right? Some people down through history, well, people down through history have gone when they were in trouble or under attack have gone to the church. 
and gone into the sanctuary because in that sanctuary there was, I don't know, I don't think it was written, but an unwritten rule that there shall be no violence of any kind in the house of the Lord. And so people came there, ran there, when they were in trouble, when they were under attack, for security, comfort, rest, and peace. Back in those days, you didn't have to lock a church. Because people held that everything within that building was sacred and could not be touched. A place of sanctuary, a place of comfort, a place of rest. God invites us into His sanctuary today to likewise find and have that same kind of comfort, peace, and security, not because of the place itself, but because God is present in this place. It is a Bethel, a house of God. But then as you think about it, you realize that no matter where you go in this vast world, any place could be, and in fact is, a Beth El, a house of God, a place where God is present. God is present in this place, in wherever you happen to be. And indeed, you may worship, you may find comfort, you may find peace and rest, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter who you're with, because God is the God of peace, and He is with you wherever you are on this vast earth, and He was able to bring that peace that the world cannot give. And so on this Thanksgiving Day, we give thanks for the places that God has given, especially the place where we find comfort and rest in Him. In Jesus' name. Father feeds them. 
Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Dear friends in Christ, things. How many of you have, well, I'm looking around, all of you have, uh, I'm sure, all kinds of things. Things that we've been keeping. Chris and I have been living in our house now for 20 years. Some of you have been, how long have you been in your house here? 50 years. You have 50 years worth of Oh, she has 50 years worth of stuff. Oh, he has 50. Aha. <laughs> Things that we feel like we can't throw away, but we've got to find a place for. Things that we enjoy. We enjoy good food, good friends and family. Things. And Jesus says, these are good and wonderful blessings, but don't get anxious about them. Don't get all worried and preoccupied with the things of this life and of this world. Why? Well, Jesus says, the Gentiles, those unbelievers, they go chasing after all the things and worry about what they're going to get and how they're going to get them. And tomorrow is going to be a strange Black Friday, maybe, as if it weren't strange before, how people go chasing after that thing that they really need, need, from store to store to store in order to get the best bargains. Things. Things are supposed to be a blessing. A blessing that God provides for our daily needs and also some things for our joy and for our enjoyment. And that's okay. But Jesus says, look to the birds of the air. Look to the flowers of the field. They don't sow, they don't till, they don't, uh, they don't, you know, have sewing machines or weaving or anything else, and yet God takes care of them. Certainly, if God takes care of them, will he not also then take care of you. He will provide what you need. Do we have to work for those things? Yes. They aren't just, they aren't just dropped on our driveway every morning like the manna that came down from heaven for the people of Israel. <laughs> Can you imagine going outside every morning and getting your breakfast? without having to worry about cooking it or anything. But they didn't have coffee, so I don't know. God provides the things that we need. But Jesus ends this uh, passage with the words, keep first the things of God and His righteousness 
and all these other things, if you've got God, the things of God, first on your mind and in your heart, then everything else will fall into place. And everything will make sense and everything will come together when your priority about things, when the priorities are correct and situated properly. The things of God endure. The things of God are the things that are ours, that we are able to then keep and have forever. Jesus revealed to the Apostle John as he was growing in age some wonderful things that would come for all who believe. As we enter heaven, God talks about uh, or revealed to John that wonderful thing of that huge, amazing banquet flowing with all kinds of glorious and delicious food and drink that doesn't seem ever to end. A banquet that would put any Thanksgiving feast to shame because this banquet, God says to John, is the banquet that is being hosted as a marriage feast by your God. And he's promised that to all who will believe, to all who put their faith in Jesus, who set their prior priority on the things of heaven and allow the other things that they need and are able to enjoy to fall into place as a result. All those wonderful things for which we may be thankful, but thankful first and foremost for the things of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, on this Thanksgiving Day, we thank you for the ways in which you have blessed our nation with bountiful harvests and the freedom to worship you without fear. We pray you would continue to guide the people in government, that our nation would make wise decisions that improve the lives of all its citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this place we call our church. Help us as a congregation to love and support one another in our mission for you, and to preserve this place as a beacon of hope and care for our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray on this Thanksgiving Day for the homeless, the hungry, the poor, who do not have the basic things that we so easily take for granted. Help us to find ways to provide for all those in need during this special time of year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, for all the ways that you bless us in body, mind, and spirit, with people, places, and things, we give you all our praise. In your glorious name we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all who are impacted by uh, the coronavirus. We pray especially for Lauren Creasy, who has uh, contracted the disease and has asked that we pray for him. Be with him, strengthen him, help him and all who are impacted in whatever way, that they may come through this by your grace and in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the family of John Ridman, who died this past week. We ask that you would be with them. Grant to them a special measure of your Holy Spirit and the comfort that comes down from above, that they may know your mercy, that they may have the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus, and look forward to that final resurrection and life everlasting in the marriage feast that will not end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing song, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.